Thank you so much for joining all of us at Arena Stage for Arena Riffs. Arena Riffs is a three-part commissioned music series that features three different composer and lyricist teams with musical selections infused with the sounds of folk, indie, and hip-hop. Each artist was given absolute free reign in terms of what they wanted to compose. Arena Riffs are self-produced, self-contained, finished pieces presented by Arena Stage. So we hope we, you, that you please stick around after the show for an informal discussion with these artists. And our final piece is A More Perfect Union from Rona Siddiqui. Arena Riffs is generously sponsored by the Artistic Directors Fund and Sheila Stamp Flea. Our Looking Forward season is generously sponsored by Global Medical REIT Incorporated. We're just so happy to have continued to engage with audiences during the pandemic through a wide range of virtual programming, including many films, the salons, youth classes, master classes, and partnerships. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we will see you after the show. And also, Check out the website to see what else we're doing at Arena Stage and join us. We love to see you online. Thanks. One, two, one, two, three. Ditching school on a Tuesday afternoon Behind the library Blades of grass prick our ears Breathing in the orange blossoms And when we touch I get weak I feel strong, can't be wrong When I know we belong together No need to ask I'm devoted to
She's beautiful. I mean, you've seen them, all right? She knows how to treat a man. My mom said, you've got to find someone who helps you become a better person. She does that. God bless her. And she's got to work it out for her. Here's the thing. She doesn't make me feel bad if I F up. I know some other guys don't have it so good, you know? Doghouse and all that. Just for saying the wrong thing. Nah, man. My lady, she accepts me for who I am, and I love her for that. She's troubled. Well, and she's also bipolar. So sometimes it's like nonstop fun and laughter and friends and food. She throws the best parties. And other times, it's like she shuts me out completely. She cries and threatens to hurt herself. She threatens to hurt me. And when it gets like that, I know it's even more important I stay with her. She needs stability and love. And therapy. <laughs> we all need therapy. But I won't give up on her. Ever. Sick. 
He tried to kick me out of the house, the house we built together. And this is on the heels of him basically stalking me, reading my emails and texts, listening to my voicemails, like he suddenly stopped trusting me for literally no reason. My parents keep saying, leave, come back home. It's safer here. But this is my home. He is my home and my kids, they would be lost without him. So he doesn't want me anymore. And I don't know what to do. And the funny thing is, I still want to be with him. What does that make me? I used to know who I was and where I stood. Now, not so much. I just gotten out of a really bad relationship when I found him. He just scooped me up and nursed me back to health. And then for a while, we were like, a power couple. My career was on fire and he was, you know, that person everyone comes to with their problems because they know he'll understand and actually do something to help. But then he got more and more distant until it was like I was invisible. And now I feel this, like, low-level contempt towards me. I'm trying to understand it. I know it's not my fault, but I keep trying to remind him of the way it was. The way it could be again. I want him to see me again. Oh 
on up and apologize I promise you I'll always have your back Once we bury all our lies Why do I stay when I feel like their love is conditional? I stay to teach. I stay because I am a source of light and love. I am strong and I have enough to give. I'm like a relationship superhero. Can't be depleted, can't be defeated. And I know someday they will reflect that energy right back at me because we are a part of each other for better or for worse. I don't deny their dark side, but I also see their light. My advice to you with yours, give them time, give them love. Don't give up, you'll see. Thank you for joining us for our third and final Arena Riff, A More Perfect Union, written and dreamt up by Rona Siddiqui. What a wonderful visual album. And I'm excited to be here with Rona, creator and musician, and Doug, one of the creators of the visual elements for the song uh, Perfect Us, and Kuhu, our wonderful vocalist who had to carry several different musical you know, themes throughout the full piece. I'm Teresa Sapien. I am the casting director and line producer at Arena. And I'm really excited to talk to you all a little bit about the creation of the piece. Can we dive in with um, Rona? I know we sort of gave you the sky's the limit with this piece. Can you tell us a little bit about your inspiration and um, how, how it came to be? Sure, sure. First of all, that is such a rare gift for somebody to just say, here, do whatever you want to dream up. Um, so I'm just so grateful to you and to Arena Stage for that opportunity. Um, and I think I, as I had been at the beginning of the quarantine, I had been listening to a lot of concept albums and getting super into them. And there was a, a one about a relationship and it really tracked through and kind of like gutted me as I listened to this thing. And I was like, what if I did 
a concept album about a relationship, except it's with the country, but you don't know it's with the country unless you're actually watching the visual. So the, so there's like the two layers of it. And um, it was kind of a really fun exercise to track that going through the whole entire piece, you know, like how can this be interpreted? How many ways can we interpret this? Um, so that was really cool. And then to get to um, kind of take the gift that you gave me, which is do whatever you want, and then ask three of my brilliant artist friends to do the same thing. That's what I did. I just was like, and here's this concept that I'm doing and I don't want to tell you what to do. So do whatever you want, you know, and that was really fun to then see what they produced. Uh, and I'm just kind of blown away. Absolutely. I'm following that train of thought. Uh, do you guys want to talk a little bit about, so the process of going from sort of, I guess, demos really to then visuals, like what, what were you given Doug and, and how did you extrapolate from there? Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, it is an extraordinary thing to be offered something with so uh, well, with so little information and so it was such a big invitation and uh, with so much confidence uh, offered over, um, and that it is it is a great a great gift and particularly in, the, in these times I would say when I would say so many institutions have feel like they need to guide the uh, the artists to direct them to make sure the political statements are correct or not or you know everybody's included and. And so what actually I think often we're all feeling these things inherently. And if you just trust the, that the artists are going to do what their skill set is meant to do, <laughs> we might end up with something that not, nobody actually ever imagined before. So I got a, the first uh, uh, incarnation of it was uh, Rona singing the song herself, which sounded great to me. And I thought, wow, this I thought she was going to sing it. And she said, no, 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 I'm, I'm not a singer and I'm not going to get something. So, okay, well, so, and then we heard, then we heard Kuhu and it was like, oh my God, that's just so great. It's just beautiful. So much better. <laughs> so much better. <laughs> but in the best way, of course, because uh, it was an interpretation, you know, it was, uh, she offered the same kind of freedom, obviously, to Kuhu and Kuhu took it and made it into the story that was, in, was suggested, but I had more it just had a kind of a, um, a, a, a its own flow, I suppose. And uh, and one of the things that happens when you read the lyrics is you're wondering why the word you, us is, is capitalized in U.S. And you're thinking like, well, is it supposed to have, uh, is it supposed to be sarcastic? Is it supposed to have a um, an edge? Is it, is it, is it, how edgy is it supposed to be? And then and then the answer is, well, it's up to you. <laughs> I don't think it should be terribly sarcastic. Rona was pretty clear about that. And then it was like, all right, so how much of it is really about the U.S., falling in love with the U.S.? And is it more about falling in love with an ideal, you know, and then allowing that ideal to you know, uh, grow or not? <laughs> and I think what happens in this case is that the the lover of the, of the us, <laughs> uh, falls in love with the ideal and forgets that there's anything else out there. And that's a big, huge mistake. Uh, so I think that was the launching part of our video, that and just sort of looking around the neighborhood to see what it would, how it would inform. So it, the, the, the film is made entirely out of murals in my neighborhood and traffic and, and uh, the, you know, going down to the, the East River and taking images. So cool. And Lastly, at Camping World in Kingston is the largest American flag, I think maybe in the country or something like that. We happened to be driving by, pulled over, and we just spent like, you know, half an hour filming that flag slowly moving. And that was like, well, something about this is just so mesmerizing. You can just get into that. And wouldn't it be interesting if maybe the end is that this character just disappears into the flag? <laughs> so that was how it started. That's great. Kuhu, do you want to speak a little bit about the, I guess, did you record and then also film yourself? And, and what was that process? Uh, so I did all three songs just in my home studio. Um, and just getting that first, I had the same experience of absorbing the songs and being like, okay, uh, fucked up relationship, very toxic, understood. And then slowly putting the pieces together of like, oh God, this is like so much more, <laughs> this is so much more personal and so much more, um, so much more nebulous than that. Um, 
And I just wanted to say, just to compliment, like what we just saw, the this the the people speaking about their toxic relationships interspersed with the whole thing is so amazing. And it really is, yeah. Offered such a great path for like just mourning where we all are right now. And yeah, I just loved it. Um, but anyway, uh, back to your original question. Um, yeah, so I recorded everything. And then when Rona was like, hey, I feel like you should also just like be in this, be in the first like lovely section of it. Um, you know, I was happy that I didn't have to do the, the like very cathartic like ghost train breakup <laughs> because that was like so awful to sing and experience right now. Um, but also so incredibly healing to like put that into the ether of like, I this fucking it sucks because I care. It's <laughs> remember when we were rehearsing that and then I just like broke down. I just broke down after she. Uh, I even think about it now and I get. Whew. It's really yeah. yeah. It hits me in a part where I'm like, thank you for putting into words that um, we care this much and we are this traumatized by it because there are such, such high stakes and we care so so deeply about how this ends up and how Americans end up yeah i think you know going back to just real quick about the um the spoken pieces the how that all came about was i had just kind of put out on facebook as i was dreaming up this whole concept i said on facebook um what if um how would you describe your relationship if you were if your uh significant other was the country or something like that just to see what people would say and i was kind of floored but I thought people were just going to be like nasty and angry and, you know, just kind of like, I give up, uh, you know, I leave or whatever. But everybody, everybody was like, I'm so trying so hard. I want so badly for this to work, you know, and, and I was kind of just really taken aback by that. And that's kind of how I shaped all of those those pieces. Anyway. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um... So yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that you asked me to do the first piece. And then I actually just went to Doug's studio and we very safely um, uh, just recorded in front of a green screen, which was an incredible experience and so kooky to not know what was going on and not see how it would end up until just now. Yes. Also just to reiterate that kind of freedom, which is once again, just it's so rare and it's so important to keep reiterating how and how much farther you can go, uh, you know, as a group of artists or something, because you think like, well, I was given this freedom and I'm not going to take anything away from you or you or you. And so you come into the studio and I Kuhu didn't know what the hell we were going to do. And I had uh, written down a, 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 a storyboard and had, you know, thrown some props together, but she just jumped 100% <laughs> into the thing. And uh, much of the first take that you did, just standing in front of the green screen, and we just, we put that line down and would tap into that anytime when we didn't really know what we'd captured. So it's really, it's pretty great. We did the whole thing in three hours. Um, Amazing. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I guess we'd started out thinking we wouldn't have anybody, but like imaginary friends or something like that in the original. But then it was like, wouldn't it be cool if we have like one human who's really interacting with this imaginary world? And uh, then that's when Rona said, well, what about Kuhu? <laughs> well, yeah, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> kind of a so, no brainer. Yeah. And try this no brainer, but actually it was, um, it was, it was kind of brave, I think, to, to, to not only do this, the, so thanks. <laughs> Coo -coo. Oh, yes. <laughs> I think it was a great right showcase of, of the song too. And, and and we go on such an emotional journey with the whole piece. Um but yeah. talk about talk about like diving in and, and really grabbing our attention in that in that first song. Um no, and we're really thrilled, you know, that you guys were able when we were spitballing like what arena riffs would be, you know, we we really wanted to ultimately leave whatever the vessel was up to the artists because it's it's been such a strange year and it, it just felt wrong to to put parameters in place and it, and it felt like we weren't going to do ourselves or the artists any any benefit by that so i'm i'm and now we have three pieces that walk and talk incredibly differently yeah but all They're are so incredibly different. personal and i i think that's just like such a such a 
you know, we couldn't have done that if we were trying to do that. Right. And I, I we, you no, know, as I've been, we were talking. Yeah. I was just going to say no, that no, I've been go, just... <laughs> want, sharing this as a model, like to show other entities, like this is what you can do if you just trust, trust the artists that you want to work with and let them do what they do. I just think it's, I just, again, I'm just so appreciative of the opportunity. Yeah. I, I have a friend who- Go ahead, Doug, was, yeah. I have a friend who has this very funny thing. I think it's funny. Anyway, he said, he stands up in front of organizations and said, I'm here, you know, in this arts organization, please desperately asking you not to give money to the arts. Please give money to the artists. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it just forces you to make a choice and think about it differently. I think it's just a kind of a remarkable, funny way of thinking. That. Absolutely. Anyway. Kuhu, did you have something to throw in or? Yeah, I just wanted to honestly take a moment to compliment Emily Goldman and Roger Father Kelly, who yes. are oh my God. not Beautiful here. People. Yeah, I was so floored. Um, I don't know Emily Goldman, um, but oh my God, just like the the meditative quality of like opening up almost like a children's book and just spiraling into mm. while you're and the nostalgia of that is so beautiful and I'm just obsessed with Roger Father Kelly's like this like very quick like don't even have time to think in between white media and white America and capitalism and just like images that just immediately have this like neuro response is so incredible. I've watched it so many times and I still am like catching different things and it hits me at different moments. It's it's so cool. It's yeah. so cool. And I think it's so interesting how like the imagery actually does end up carrying through. I know you very intentionally the let, let these artists yeah. do their thing. Yeah. Um, but the, the carry through is, is really interesting. And yes, you pick up something different every time you watch it, I think. Um, which is the best kind of art, right? Yeah, yeah. And I also like, I didn't know, who, I knew I wanted to work with these three artists. I didn't know which song that each of them would get. I was just like, as I was writing, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let it tell me who should visualize, you know, do the visuals on this piece. And so that was really fun too. Just again, to just sit back and trust myself and, you know, and the whole process and just allow it to be whatever it was gonna be. Well, I, it, it, I mean, yeah, three very different, three different, three very different songs, and three very different emotions, and and uh, because Ku is singing them all three, it was a brilliant decision to do that, and and uh, so it is a voice, you know, and it it is it does it does speak about the range of a single human being's you know, yeah. uh, emotional landscape, and and particularly at this time when there's an isolation going on, you're forced to sort of be with yourself and think about things and slow down. And yeah. so I think what was the mar most remarkable thing about watching those three totally different videos together, inter intermittently uh, broken up by the the very more, more realistic speaking of, about it, was that it all comes together in a way that I just don't think there's anything like it I've ever seen before. It's like a new medium, it just <laughs> as a whole, it's a, it does, it, it's not, it's more than a collage. It's sort of like a, it, it, it's a very different kind of feeling that way. And this is of course, just a small snippet of the incredible range that Kuhu has. So I would also say that it was lovely to see all the different sort of genres at play in your voice. <laughs> yes. Uh, I want to just wrap it up by saying, you know, this has been uh, like, I think a, a strange year to engage with, with our, with fellow artists. And I wonder, are there any things that you've learned about yourself in terms of your, your work with people across mediums or across um, sometimes great distances that you want to at all speak about? I think it's really interesting the way, um, the way we communicate, I think has distilled a little bit. And I just wondered if you guys wanted to talk about that a little bit in the context of this piece? Uh, honestly, I, I find it really interesting. Like, I think at the very beginning, people were very, and people are still saying the, the thing that we've all heard, which is like, enough Zoom theater. I don't want Zoom theater. We're like, yeah, well, this is just, it's technology and like, oh, well, this is just the digital platform. So we just have to adjust our expectations or we just have to adjust whatever. And I think that that's really interesting because honestly, I think it's given us a little bit of freedom as artists to allow people to, kind of expand their horizons on things that they haven't worked in mediums that they haven't really touched on before. And for the first time, what that statement means to me is I'm seeing people be like, oh, I haven't seen this person ever do something like this before. 
and I'm going to accept it and I'm going to consume it and I'm going to not uh, expect that it's going to be perfect and that's okay. And that to me, I don't see that very often in the theater. And it's amazing hmm. to see that kind of, um, they're wording it in a negative way, but honestly, it's a very, very positive intention of whatever it is, I will consume it, I will support it, and I will accept that the borders are different, but that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be consumed. Yeah, totally. I think, um, you know, artists are creative people. They're going to pivot and pivot and pivot and, and find new ways to to share whatever they want to share in that moment. And I've always wanted to do something like this. So it was kind of the perfect moment for me. And even before this, I was doing, you know, I did an animated feature from my show, Salam Medina Tales of a Hafgan recently. And um, I've done a lot of actually animated shorts um, coming coming out of the political movement. and. Um, that's been super fun for me. I think my, my Sesame Street brain is like, yay, <laughs> you know, like, we've always <laughs> wanted to do this. So uh, that's been really fun. But, uh, you know, on the on the flip side of that, one of the hardest things was not being in the room with, with the musicians. That was terribly hard. Not being in the room with yeah. Kuhu, not being in the room, having the band all record separately was really hard for me. As an orchestrator, one of my favorite things is to be in yeah. that room and hear your orchestrations for the first time and then be able to pick it apart and be like, oh, actually, I need the tuba to do this or I need to flip the, the you know, like, and I couldn't do any of that. So I had to just really trust what I put on the page for my orchestrations. And thankfully, it, it turned out OK, but I it still missed that. I really did. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that, too. I like one of the things that um, we all crave and think we need is stability and a certain kind of consistent world. And then we were all thrown into this realm of total uncertainty, right? And uh, and uh, <clears throat> I think one of the things that we can offer professionally is their skill set of this artist is that we uh, remind everyone that there's nothing particularly secure in anything at any moment. And and this yeah. this in unstable world that we are living in. Like, welcome to our world. This is what it's like every day. And it's sort of, and we it's sort of a welcome. Uh, it, it, it felt it felt a little bit uh, nice to be in 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 a in this um, environment where things are changing and it's actually okay. It's sort of acceptable to be to uh, to be there with everyone else. Um, so I I think what both of you are talking about uh, not being in the room with the same people it, uh, it, it certainly changes your perspective and you're creating a product you never thought was going to be interesting or even out uh, maybe useful but in fact in the end uh sort of a slowing down rebooting and uh getting a, a chance to do less and get get it to mean more uh, that's what it felt like with this this project i think yeah, absolutely. I do feel like if anyone creates software that helps the music side of like that has been the consistent like yeah. hard to do music remotely. Um, it is. But we, you guys, we would never know it, it with the piece that you have created. I want to thank you all for your artistry and for also spending additional time talking to me on Zoom. Uh, we certainly appreciate the peek behind the curtain. And I know, um, especially with these pieces, there's so much to talk about because um, you guys have created such a multi-layered quilt of a piece. So thank you. And, uh, you know, I really hope everyone enjoys A More Perfect Union. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Rona. Great to see everybody. I'm so deep into you. All I see, all I do. Promise me you'll be true forever. Cause in this moment, I know I die.